Shalom. Today is Thursday, September the 15th, 2016, and I just want to share with you a couple things about what we are currently studying here at Destiny Apostolic Resource Center. This is actually a message to the body of Christ, calling us to prepare ourselves for what is to come. When we look at the political situation in this nation, in the United States of America and around the world, we can sense that something is in the atmosphere. Something is coming. Many are talking about the Muslim uprising in this nation. Many are talking about ISIS invading the nation. Many are talking about the Russia invading America. Many are speculating about the rise of China and the threat that that poses uh, many are talking about the collapse of um, uh, the European Union and the impact that will have on these United States of America. Many are talking about the United States dollar falling and collapsing and the chaos that will follow. And many are already speculating a lot about the racial tension in this country. Uh, we all know that this is nothing new, but... Uh, the combination of all these things uh, is presenting sort of a gloomy outlook on the future. And so in the midst of this fear is gripping many. Uh, and this can be uh, seen in the current presidential elections that we have here in the United States. One thing comes up when you... Uh, Examine when you look into the situation politically in the country uh, and the response of the people uh, and the way the campaigns are running, uh, one word characterizes everything it's fear. But for us, children of God, we need not fear because God already told us from the beginning what will happen. And when we read in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, and verses 24 and 27, the Lord is talking after presenting the Beatitudes, you know, uh, the Sermon on the Mountain, which was the foundation of kingdom life in the lives of, you, of the people of the kingdom. And, and pretty soon, as we go towards the end of the year, we're going to start studying the uh, Sermon on the Mount and praying through it to lay a foundation. So those of you who are interested, I invite you to come and join us on our Bible study and prayer line. And if you are in St. Louis, come join us here physically. The Sermon on the Mountain, that is the foundation. And at the conclusion of it, the Lord said in Matthew 7, 24 and 25, he says, if anyone hears my word, the words that I just spoke, if anyone hears and practices them, if anyone will have this foundation in his or her life, this person will be compared to a man who built a house on the foundation of the rock, which is Jesus Christ himself. And if any man hears and does not walk in these truths, he is compared to a man who built the house on the sand. Now, you see, both of these people are in the church. These are people in the church. These are born-again Christians. They attend church, they hear the preaching, they study the, the, the Sermon on the Mount, but one built on the foundation and the other one refuses to dig, builds on the sand. Now, pay attention. They built in the same environment. They built on the same surface. But one decides to dig, to dig deep, until he comes up to the rock, and then he begins to build the house. The other one is too complacent, is too lazy, doesn't care, is content with just coming to church and going back home and re reading the scriptures, doesn't dig. See, sand 
is found on top of the rock. You, you have to dig. And, and, and many times I, I talk to people and I say, you know, uh, as we, do, we go through the transformation series, we have to dig deep into your life. See, the enemy came with three things, storms of life, deception, you, using your own ignorance. And the storms of life have left many of us with wounds, spiritual wounds, as well as uh, uh, physical wounds. And because of that, we have developed mindsets. Plus, we have learned to conform to the culture, to the pattern of this age. We want to be like everyone else. We don't feel comfortable being unique. And so we conform to this pattern. And the process of conforming to the pattern of the, the world is the same process of not putting to practice the scriptures, the teachings of the truth in the Sermon on the Mount, which is all about digging and laying the foundation. When the CS Towers were being built in Chicago, for a long time that area was fenced, and for months and a long time, people walked by, drove by, and uh, they didn't know what was going on. Some people would say things like, you know, they started, you know, they've been doing this for a long time. We don't see nothing coming up. And they say that about you too. Especially those of you coming to this ministry now. Something may not be visible. You're going through the teachings, preparing yourself for what is to come. But then we all know that the first job is to dig deeper. The higher the structure, the deeper you have to go to establish the foundation. And so we need to dig deep into your souls to deal with the issues in your heart, the issues in your soul. See, for most of us, Psalm 51 and verse 6 says, God desires truth in the innermost being, but for most of us, the deception of the enemy is what is in the innermost being. We have to dig deep. You see, many of us carry wounds. Those wounds are not healing because they have infested. The reason they are not infested, they are infested, is because the wounds are not cleaned. And so God is bringing purification fire in this season. The fire has already started. It starts in the house of God. It starts with the priesthood. We invite the fire. We have to volunteer to go through the fire and the sword for the removal, the pruning of everything that is not of God. Every branch that doesn't bear fruit must be cut off. And then the branches that bear fruit must be pruned. Both of them go through the knife. Now notice something very interesting here. The winds come, the rain comes, and the storms come. And they hit the two houses. Both the one that hears and practices has to deal with the winds, the rain, and the storms. And the one who doesn't practice also comes against the same rain, the same wind, and the same storm. And so you may be asking yourself, why am I going through this? The truth of the matter is, if you are built on the rock, your house will not collapse. Many marriages are collapsing because people's lives, people go to church, people prepare for a wedding, they don't prepare for marriage. They go for a cup couple of counseling sessions before marriage and they said we have prepared for marriage marriage preparation begins before you are born your parents speaking to you in your mother's womb marriage preparation begins with the sermon on the mount laying of the foundation in your life and when the two come together and they have that foundation in them then we can lay the foundation for this marriage now, when the storms come and the wind 
winds come and the rain fall and they hit the house, this marriage is going to stand. This ministry is going to stand. We are laying the foundation in this ministry. I am working to build tough people who can handle the storms, the winds, and the rain. Preparing for what is to come. Beloved, the most glorious hour of the church is still ahead of us. But also, the most traumatizing and the most trying moment the church will face is also ahead of us. Both are coming. We need to start building the foundation right now. That is the work of the apostles and the prophet, the wise master builders. The church is to be built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophet, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. That's the work of the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, to build this foundation in the lives of people. The prophetic in the end times, the true prophets in the end times, are not there to just tell people about the blessing God is about to do this. I see God is doing something. Oh, you know, you've been through X, Y, Z. No, it's revealing, communicating, teaching people the full counsel of God in the end times. What God wants in their lives in the church, in the nation. This is what the voice from the throne is all about. And so I started by talking about these two people, both hearing the word, reading the, the word, receiving the truth. You see, the scriptures tell us that you shall know the truth, John chapter 8 and verses for uh, uh, 31 all the way to 47, you can study that. And the truth shall set you free. In Greek, it says the truth shall liberate you from the lies, from the deception and the delusion. But the truth that will set you free is the truth you receive in the innermost being, in the most, in the most parts of your being, that you turn into faith by which you begin to live, as the scriptures say, the just shall live by faith. That faith is a faith that you have worked out from the truth that you receive. That's the truth that liberates you from the deception. I speak with a lot of people in the church. Many are deceived in so many areas. I have never seen so much ignorance in the people of God as we have today. You see, it's not just about gift and ministry before I go into ministry, before I go into marriage, before I grow up, before I launch a business, before I go into politics, before we can build a nation, we must lay a foundation. And so the judgment of God, which is spoken of in Isaiah 26, the scriptures tell us that when judgment of God is in the land, the people follow righteousness. But in the absence of judgment, people are lost. So judgment is a good thing. It brings us back in line with what the heart of God, the purposes and the intentions and the plans of God are for us, for our children, for our families, for our uh, uh, marriages, for our businesses, our ministries, and our nation. As a nation, what we need at this turning, critical turning point in the history of the nation. Let me tell you something. After these elections, this country will not be the same. What we need is the revelation of the truth. America needs to know the truth so the truth can set you free. We have to begin to walk by revelation and guided by the scriptures. Now, when we talk about the truth, beloved, the truth, the word, is a person. It's not just what you read. Most people the only relationship they have with the word is what is written in a book called the Bible. Let me tell you something. The Bible 
is not the word of God. The word of God is a person. What is written in those scriptures is written for the purpose of revealing the living word of God so that you may have a relationship with him. Many have a relationship with the book. They put it under their pillow. They put it in the glove box in the car. They put it in their living room. They display it in the church, but it's not in them. Through the Bible, the written word, I have to come out with the revelation of the living word. He is the truth. He is the one I must relate with. And he said, my sheep know my voice, and they follow me. We must begin to hear the voice of God. This is not only for the preachers. This is for all of you. Listen, the leaders must begin to train and teach people. Hebrews chapter 4 and 5 and 6 is talking about solid food. It is for those who by virtue of practice, have trained their senses. It doesn't just come by the laying on of hands. It doesn't come just by going to church, just by reading the Bible, occasionally watching, preaching on television. You have to exercise your senses, your spiritual senses, your hearing, your seeing, your tasting, your smelling, your touch, you have to exercise them. It takes practice. And what we're doing in this ministry, especially as we enter into the month of October, November, and December, we will be engaging the spirit realm, engaging the Lord, learning to quiet the noise in us so we may hear his voice. When was the last time you heard the voice of God? The voice of God is life. It is the voice of God that released creation into existence. Everything you need. Beloved, God came two years ago and he released his voice to me in a vision. That voice permeated every fiber, every cell of my being. It wrapped me as a bubble. It penetrated everything. I was saturated by the voice of God. And, and, and I lost gravity. And I was, I was soaring in the spirit. And that voice reverberated in me. It shook me, beloved. And when God was done telling me what he was telling me, I began to come descend into the natural. I do remember the process. It was gradual. And even after I had been in the natural, I was still lingering in that atmosphere. I was on my bed. I couldn't move. I didn't know where I was. I wasn't in the natural. I wasn't fully in the spiritual. I had to transition. And he gave me a very important message, which I will speak about next year the voice of God. Now let me ask you these questions. Since you were born again, how often have you heard the voice of God? How have you grown in engaging the Lord, in seeing in the Spirit, in hearing in the Spirit, in smelling in the Spirit, in speaking in the Spirit to, to, to the heart of God, in feeling and sensing in the spirit the presence of God how have you developed how often have you heard the voice of God this year is this an occasional thing see God created you and I so that we may fellowship so we can hear him so we can see him just like Adam God visited in the cool of the day. You have to enter into that place of the cool of the day, into rest, in order to encounter God. We should seek this be, to be our daily experience. Your destiny depends on it. The future of your family depends on it. The future of this nation depends on it. And I'm not just talking about the preachers. Every one of you. You must begin to seek to pursue God in such a way that your walk with him like Enoch is a daily walk. 
Enoch walked so close with God that he just sneaked in there and God took him. We are raising up the Enochs of the end time. Those who will finish the work of the kingdom in the end times are going to be the Enochs of the end times. Walking with the Lord in spirit. There's another man who walked with the Lord. As, as we, we, we dig deep things in deep inside of us to prepare ourselves for what is to come, all your anger, bitterness, resentment, all that resentment and disappointment, all the, 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 every wound that you have is a call for forgiveness. God is releasing the purification fire. Those purifying angels, the fiery ones, are coming into the house of God. Judgment begins in the house of God. You and I are the house of God. I am the house of God. Invite the fire into your life. Let the judgment begin with me. Joseph was dealt a very bad deal by his own brothers. But if you read Genesis 42, from verse, from chapter 42 all the way to chapter 45, in chapter 45, from verse 4 to verse 8, Joseph tells his brothers, don't be depressed about what you did. It is God who sent me here to preserve, to preserve a descendant for you so that you may be saved. My God, my God. These people were ridden with guilt. You see, Joseph knew his own destiny was tied to him forgiving his brothers. The destiny of Joseph was to, divert, to put the people of Israel in that city of Goshen of abundance, in a, in a city of refuge, and laid the foundation for a nation to be formed, and he prophesied to them, you will go out of this land of Egypt Take my bones with me. I speak prophetically to you that I will be buried over in the land that my, our Heavenly Father promised to us, to our forefathers. That was the prophetic Joseph. His destiny was to be the one who facilitated, who laid the foundation for the nation of Israel to be born. It is out of Egypt that Israel multiplied and became a nation. They were not a nation before they entered Egypt. And Joseph had to make sure that they were a nation. They became a nation. And they walked out of Egypt. And that's how our Lord Jesus Christ was born. That's how the covenant was established. That's how you and I became children of God. That's how you and I became the people of God. That's how the new covenant was established, beloved. All the way to the restoration of all things started with the forgiveness of Joseph. The destiny of the nations and his own destiny were on the line when he was facing his brothers. See, most of your wounds, it's because you haven't forgiven. Forgiveness will release healing into your life. You must understand that forgiveness, when you forgive, you're not doing a favor to the person you forgive. You're doing a favor to yourself because you pray, forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who trespassed against me. So, you see, beloved, preparation for what is to come. We must dig and lay the foundation. We have to dig into the issues. Many of you, when I begin to talk with you about some of those issues, they are difficult to navigate. It's not easy because you don't want to talk about them. You turn your back on them, but you never dealt with them. And the enemy knows when you begin to build, he will put pressure in the areas where you are wounded the enemy knows everywhere you are wounded 
And when you get married, he puts pressure in those areas and you act out that wound and destroy your marriage. When you start a ministry, he puts pressure in those areas. That's why as I prepare leaders for this ministry, everyone must go through the transformation series and through deliverance. Because unless you go through that process, you will not be effective. And the enemy will know he will come. He will put pressure on you in that area where you are weak, where the wound is infested, where you don't have strength. And that's the area where you have come under attack repeatedly, marriage after marriage after marriage after marriage after relationship after relationship, in your own family with friends, you keep running away, you don't want to talk to nobody. Right now you've even left the church because a church got injured. But beloved, even when you go in isolation, King David said, where shall I go away from your presence? If I go into the uh, uh, place of the dead, you are there. If I go into the wilderness, you are there. If I go deep in the ocean, you are there. You cannot run away. Come and join us. Come and join us as we go through the transformation series. May the Lord bless you. We continue with this study. I want you to be blessed.